a surprise guest. John Cena is here. See, I don't mind the fans singing Jericho's song. I don't mind the fans singing Cody's song. I don't like them singing Seth's song because the song sucks. You ever notice that? It's not it, even a song. It's, it's three like, notes. Yeah, it fucking sucks, dude. It, it's like, like get, some, a, get a good song and have them sing it. Someone watched a football game, listened to the crowd <laughs> singing Seven Nation Army. So you know this is good, but wrestling fans aren't this smart. We need to dumb it down. Cut the number of notes down. It sucks in football, too. Like, honestly, here's the thing, everybody. People, you know, they get on me for not liking this and everything, but what you guys don't seem to remember is that uh, Seth was a heel, okay? And he got this music. And this music is the most simplistic, shitty song there's ever been. And so I think this all started because fans were sarcastically singing along with this dumb fucking song. And then it, like, caught on and ultimately turned him babyface. But it wasn't like they started singing the song because he was a good guy and they were, like, supporting him. Like, this song fucking sucked. I feel the same way about Barbie Girl by Vakwa. <laughs> so... <laughs> You've been holding in that bit of hatred for 20 years now. <laughs> John Cena comes out. They're rapping along to his song, and not just the your time is up, my time is now part. The verses. It's incredible. He's so excited by this that after the music stops, he gets them going again, and they rap it again a cappella. So Cena's out here to talk about how great London is. The first premium live event in London in 20 years. These decision makers don't know how to feel about London, he says. It's kind of a hostile environment. Sometimes you fans, they, sometimes they think you fans are a distraction. And the crowd goes, boo. And Cena says, sometimes they think you try to take over the show. And they go, yay. So he's here on behalf of them. You're underappreciated. You have earned my respect, he says. And they all say, thank you, Cena. They love him so much. And he notes that they don't like when we, the wrestlers, stop and let you, the fans, do that singing or chanting, or whatever you're doing. You know what's so weird about this whole fucking thing? So this whole thing was just like, it was mind-blowing to me. So he's out here saying that the company doesn't like when you fans have fun, okay? And he says they don't like when you're singing or whatever and we pause to let you do it. Right? That's what he said. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, if they don't like when the fans sing and, you know, do whatever, this whole fucking show was booked to give these fans the opportunity to do all of those things. Not to mention, Dominic did an interview recently, and uh, and I, I think it was Dominic, but, but he was basically talking about how, you know, uh, Vince went to a show and Dominic was on it. And uh, maybe this actually wasn't a Dominic interview, but I, I heard this. Essentially what happened was Dominic was doing his deal. And, you know, the fans boo him and everything. And every time he tries to start, start, start talking, they boo louder. Sure. And, uh, and, and literally Vince's advice to him was don't talk over them. Hmm. Let oh. them. So this whole scene of promo is like a weird load of shit, <laughs> which like I couldn't figure it out. Like, why is he why is he healing the company? Because the company doesn't hate when fans have fun. They don't like when they hijack shows. But nobody in England was hijacking the show. I mean, what, they, they sang for uh, uh, Bailey and she's a heel? I mean, that's like the only thing I can think of where, like, someone got the, quote, wrong reaction. I mean, everything else. You think they, they did all that L.A. Night stuff so that the fans wouldn't cheer? No, it's fucking by design so they would cheer for L.A. Night. So it was just really weird for him to come out here and claim the company didn't like all of these things that actually the, the, the company does like. And then he's like, oh, we got to come here for WrestleMania. And uh, that was weird, too, because this was not a shoot. Like, this was clearly by design. Right. You know, they want to outdraw, you know, Wembley at some point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a WrestleMania, there are a lot of logistical issues and financial issues in the sense that, you know, as Dave mentioned last night, they want to get paid by the city to come. And London don't need to pay anybody to come to London. That's all people do is go to London. So I don't know if there's, like, this is not imminent, but clearly it was by design to get, you know, people clamoring for WrestleMania to come to London and eventually try to get London to pay them to bring WrestleMania to London. But it was just a really weird promo. So eventually Grayson Waller comes out, says they should do WrestleMania in Australia instead. 
He knows John Cena's on a losing streak. You lost Austin Theory. You, you lost to Roman Reigns. You lost to The Fiend. He had a viral moment being on my talk show at WrestleMania in Australia. <laughs> to which John Cena has the best deadpan reaction. Where he simply says, so you want me to fly to Australia to get a rub from Grayson Waller. I'm going to pass. And he goes to leave, but uh, Grayson won't let him. They go back and forth a little bit. Eventually, Grayson jumps in from behind, and I don't want to alarm you. He loses the fight. Cena hit plants with the AA and wins. Yeah. This is a hell of a thing, is all I can say about all well, this. Well, what I, what I got out of this was this is classic WWE in that Grayson Waller did not need to talk for 15 minutes, but it's it, this was a Vince thing where it's like, Talk until the people hate you, and then talk for like five more minutes so they just can't wait for Cena to hit you with the move. He just fucking went on. And I like Grayson Waller. I think he's got a lot of charisma. I think he's a great talker. He's going to be a star. But fuck me, this guy talked for an hour, and finally Cena laid him out, and Cena could not have gotten out of this building faster. I mean, he was fucking sprinting out of there after he laid this guy out. It's funny to hear John Cena get that reaction. Just nothing but positivity. He thought it was funny as well. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> you know that. It was really cool, actually. Women's Money in the Bank match. Also really cool. Trish Stratus versus Zoe Stark versus Bailey versus Io Sky versus Lena Vega versus Becky Lynch and her totally awesome gear in tribute to Siren of the X-Men. Made me very, very happy. It was not Jean Grey, as a lot of you thought. It was Siren, who is, of course, a, a <laughs> fairly obscure X-Men and also Irish. So, it's freaking... Got all that, Brian? It's freaking 2023. I, I I can't even. It's 2023. And I'm watching Trish Stratus take bumps off ladders and regretting it. Yeah. And then taking bumps onto ladders. <sighs> this woman, I cannot put over more. Yeah. Bro, I'm and, and you know what? I'm a very unique person to be able to do this because I am the same age as Trish Stratus. She is 47 years old. She'll she be 48 now. in uh, December. We're uh, six months apart or whatever. And uh, and I also came back after a long time off, and uh, holy fuck, this she's she's fallen off ladders, dude. They they did a spot which actually was like, it was goofy, and you know they probably watched it back and were kind of like that was kind of weird. But like they turned Trish into a ladder bridge, like her human body was a bridge. Yes. So that Zelina could walk across her body. But her poor mm-hmm. face is smashed on the ladder. And I don't I know if that's that. where it happened, but she had this giant bruise on the bridge of her nose. It may have been broken. And she's fucking falling off ladders from way up, yeah. okay? And, you know, yes, you know, some people will go, well, you know, it wasn't a flat back bump or anything. You're right, it wasn't. But you know what? When you're 47 years old, you can jump off something high and land on your feet and just totally, absolutely, completely destroy your knee. In fact, in fact, it's not even when you're 47 because Zoe Stark, that's how she destroyed her knee. She jumped off something and landed on her feet and her whole knee exploded. So yeah. Trish out there doing all this stuff at 47 years old is just, it's, it's, it's like crazy. It's like it, Sting. It, it is literally crazy. Yes. yes. It is literally insane. Yeah, the, the, the Trisha's nose, either it could have been the ladder bridge spot or there was the part where she fell off the ladder. Her face hit the rope. It looked very bad, and she disappeared for a long time. But, yeah, she does not have to do, have to be doing any of this shit. And uh, she is. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so we had a lot of storylines going in here. Becky Lynch trying to win in the, in the uh, United Kingdom uh, for her fellow Euros. You had... Trish Stratus and uh, Zoe Stark working together and working well. And uh, this caught by contrast, at the same time, you had Bailey and Io Sky working together and working well until they didn't. And uh, they have a, uh, uh, there's a point where Bailey and Io are running wild and they set up the ladder and suddenly realize only one of them can win this thing. And there's tension. And it gets broken up there, but it comes back to play later. They do the same ladder bridge setup the dudes had done earlier, and the crowd noticed because they chanted, that's the same thing, or maybe sang, that's the same thing. But uh, it still worked. And Zoe is taking out Bailey, pulls out handcuffs, and uh, they call on Trish, and uh, excuse me, Becky, not Bailey. But uh, they are able to get one pair, uh, w- one set of handcuffs on Becky, but they can't cover anything. She runs wild, whips their asses, and yes, Trish Stratus took a manhandle slam onto a ladder. Ow. 
So, Trish is killed. Zoe was working with her. Now she has no choice but to try and win it for herself. Uh, she climbs the ladder with Zelina, and they trade camera cuts until Zelina hits a code red onto a ladder bridge. Now, Eo climbs, and she That she's... was completely fucking insane, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Eo goes to climb, but out of nowhere, Bailey tips over the ladder to Necker. And you understand something. This is the UK crowd. Cena noted they didn't always cheer for the people they're supposed to cheer for or boo for the people they're supposed to boo for. They have been singing the Bailey song all night long. They love Bailey, and they love Bailey, and they love Bailey. But man, when Bailey tipped over this ladder and cost Eo Sky the match, no more singing! No more support for this Bailey character. This crowd was pissed. So she goes to climb. Becky appears with the handcuffs and fish hooks her with the handcuffs to pull her down the ladder. But as the two of them are fighting, EO recovers, reaches essentially through the ladder and handcuffs Becky to Bailey. So they are both stuck in the ladder. They cannot get free unless one or both of them tears their arm out of the socket. Neither was able to do that. And it was absolutely brilliant, creative, never seen it before. And Io was able to climb over both of them and win. I love this match. It was fun. It was creative. It was intelligent. There was storyline going on. There was contrast going on. Great action. And uh, everyone was happy with the winner. Huge thumbs up. I thought it was it was very good. I thought the men's match was much better just because, I don't know, it was just they did a lot crazier things. And, uh, you know, I'm not rating it on the crazy things they do. But there were there were some things in here that were like, they weren't perfect, but overall, I thought the the booking was was pretty good. I thought the finish was fucking awesome, and uh, an EO won, and you know, not a deal, I presume, where she's going to lose the briefcase. She'll probably end up winning the title. Um, but yeah, this was, uh, you know, this was a very good for what it was. I will say that it was not the best well, women's Money in the Bank ladder match I ever saw, but it was good. I thought the finish was super creative. Um, you didn't even see EO Sky. She's completely out of the picture for a good four minutes. And you she was an afterthought. There was, she was not on the screen until um they had Becky and um Bailey fighting on the ladder and then EO appeared from well, from nowhere and then cuffed them together and then grabbed the uh, briefcase. I thought the finish was fantastic. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you, Sean. Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow. Look at oh, that, everybody. Wow. Holy smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So you're telling me that my cat is from another planet? Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. He's not a foot taller than me. God. He's not the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Drysack and Ideal Mexican. 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 Yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His panties. <laughs> yeah, he saw his Drysack. S A J W N G A W If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.